Hi, this is Mike Haber. Confessions don't come easy to criminal defense lawyers. That said, I am an admitted history geek. So please accept my special thanks for having asked me, why do we have a Fourth Amendment requirement? Before we won our independence from the British Crown, the United States was nothing more than a series of colonies populated by folks who had traversed the Atlantic Ocean, many fleeing King George III's tyrannical rule. Yet 3,000 nautical miles later, these same folks found themselves still subject to the imperiousness of that monarch. After a prolonged and bloody war, we want our freedom, or as some might say, Old Uncle Sam was born. We secured our independence and enacted our constitution to establish a protocol for how our new kingless country would be governed. Our founding fathers and founding mothers were wicked smart. They drafted our constitution with foresight and benevolence, but they didn't get it absolutely correct in its first draft. Modifications were necessary. In fact, because of some of its omissions, several of the colonies opposed the Constitution's ratification and only agreed to endorse it because additions or amendments had been agreed to in advance. As a relevant aside, today we call this a condition precedent. The Fourth Amendment is one of the first ten amendments, which are collectively known as the Bill of Rights, and it was added to the Bill of Rights on December 15th of 1791 as a direct response to the king's abuse of something that was known as a writ of assistance. A writ of assistance was a generalized, nonspecific search warrant, which was routinely issued by the British government, executed on colonial soil, and was a significant source of tension in the mid to late 18th century. The Fourth Amendment made it crystal clear that the king's privilege, meaning British soldiers could enter, search, seize, and secure wherever, whenever, and why ever, even on a mere whim, it wasn't going to fly anymore. The Fourth Amendment manifestly prohibited our new government from acting as a de facto king, and it served as a check valve against any government search or seizure unless a warrant, based upon probable cause, was first issued by a neutral and detached magistrate. Of course, the 18th century turned into the 19th, and then the 20th, and now the 21st, and our Constitution has been and will continue to be interpreted as times continue to change. With all of that said, I want to thank you again very much for this particular question. I appreciate your having asked it. Please remember that here at Haber PA, it's all about reasonable doubt. And if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be putting out more soon.